morning everybody it is a little bit before six o'clock um, i'm getting ready to leave for work um, i'm going in today because they're doing a flu shot clinic um it's free for faculty and then also i need to do some grading and um i'm gonna meet up with ashley who is a fellow faculty member and we're gonna go have lunch and go to the cross stitch store uh, because I want to get the, um, I want to get some threads to do my Halloween start here. So I'm digging around in my cross stitch box here to get the pattern out, see what I need to get. So uh, once I pull it out, I'll show it to you. Okay, so here is my Halloween start. It's uh, the Salem Trials, the Witch Hunt by the Little Stitcher. And uh, this is a pattern from 2020. Uh, I'm going to start this on Halloween. And I was going to do it on this fabric. It's fabric flare fabric. And it's got October 31st, 1693 on it. But then the date on this is 1692. <laughs> so I decided I would change gears on the fabric. And I've got a couple of ones picked out here. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these to the store with me. And I'm going to see which one brings out um the fabric the best i've got uh 232 count linens from uh, fortnite fabrics and then i've got an 18 count uh, ada from be stitch me so uh, i took a picture of the flosses what i want to do i think what i think i want to do is maybe do a conversion and not use DMC, use something a little bit richer, maybe some silks or I don't know, some over dyes. We'll see. Uh, I'm just gonna look and see what I can see. Um, yeah, so hopefully that'll all work out. We're gonna try to go to lunch afterwards. It's gonna depend on how long it takes us to get through because the flu shot clinic is just a come, you know, come as you are kind of thing. Um, you know, first come, first serve sort of thing. And then Ashley actually has an appointment to get her uh, third uh, COVID booster. Um, I can't get mine yet because I got Moderna, so it's not available yet, I guess. I don't know. I haven't heard anything about it being available yet. Um, I think it's for special cases it's available, but I'm not, <laughs> I'm not a special case, I guess. Um, so yeah, so that's the plan for today. So I'll try to take some video when we go to the needlework store because it's pretty awesome. Anyway, I'll check back in with y'all in a little while. Well, I got my flu shot. <laughs> they're providing it work. They're providing them at work for faculty. And they're having the, the integrated health sciences people in this nice new building are getting a little bit of practice. They're getting some clinical practice giving flu shots. So that's exciting. And I got a Bears Vax button for my lanyard too. So, and a sticker, because you got to get the stickers, right? <laughs> I'm at the store trying to figure out what I want to do if I'm just going to safety up and do DMC or make some substitutions. So we'll see. <laughs> I don't know yet. Okay, y'all, I thought I would uh, record this as I was driving home because I just got off the phone with one of my former students, Luke. Um, he graduated in 2020 during all the mess of the beginning of the pandemic and then um, couldn't quite decide what he wanted to do for grad school, so he took some time off and then um, I had talked with, he wants to do astrophysics. And I had talked with him about different schools that he could apply and I had made some, some um, contacts for him. Um, he decided to go to our state university and is not happy there at all. He is in the math department there and just, 
I think it was a case of he was misadvised. And then also, and this is a, a complaint that I have about some professors at big universities. Okay. Um, they tend to regard, number one, regard teaching undergraduates as a chore. They don't want to do it. And then also, too, they regard teaching introductory graduate classes, like kind of the core graduate classes, as a chore. They want to work just with their students. And I get that. Okay, you're, a, you're at a big R1 university. You want to, you know, it's a publisher parish kind of situation, right? But at the end of the day, you are at a university where there are students. You're not at a pure research institute. So you have to teach, right? You, you, that's part of your job description. And we've sent students to this university before, and they've not had, largely lately, our students have not had good experiences up there. And it's not because they're not prepared. It's that they either get put in classes that are not leading them to the thing they want to be doing, even if it's like a general class or a core class. And also the professors just seem to have this attitude of they don't care. Now contrast that with Grace, who is at the University of Maryland, and her, her advisor is great and has built community. And you know, her, her lab students are all a little family and it's great and I just wish that there were more people that would take fresh graduate students in kind of under wing like that this old system this old academic system of you got to suffer 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 or you're not worthy is a bunch of BS in my opinion um, there's a lot of gatekeeping that goes on especially in graduate programs and I mean yeah you got to learn the stuff but to treat people with the almost malice in some ways uh, is wrong, in my opinion. Of course, I'm not a graduate professor. And I teach at a university where we are focused on teaching. So we had a little bit of a talk, and I told him, you know, can't hurt to, because he's missed the spring application deadline. But I said, well, look, reach out to the people that I've put you in touch with. Explain to them that, you know, the program that you're in is just not what you want to be doing, you know, and just see. I mean, you know if you don't ask, the answer is definitely no. So at least if you ask and they say no, at least you've asked. And then I told him, I said, if it doesn't work out at those places, come back to UCA for the spring and go to the math graduate program there because we do have a master's program in math. And But those professors also teach undergraduates and they, they seem to be more student focused which is good. It just made me sad because Luke is a very smart young man. He's very hardworking. He's kind. And it just makes me sad to think that he is just miserable right now. And I told him, I said, whatever you do, you need to get out of that program, right? If you are miserable, graduate school is too hard, you know, as even when you're working towards something that you're in love with, if you're miserable, it's, it's, it's impossible. So, and he was thanking me and he was like, I appreciate you answering my phone call. And I said, Luke, once you're my student, you're always my student. I don't care if you're 50 years old and of course I'll be 80 something. <laughs> I said, you can still call me for advice, you know, because once you're one of mine, you're always one of mine. You know, that's the way it works. So, um, but anyway, so I just thought I would share that with y'all. I got some fun mail from Carol today. I love it. <laughs> she knows me so well. Okay, y'all, um, I'm home. Ashley and I went to the Stitcher's Garden to do a little retail therapy, as she likes to call it. Um, and all I picked up was I got some floss to start the Salem Witch Trials with. I was, I was gonna use some fabric I already had but she just got some new fabric in it's not in the computer yet so I wasn't able to buy it um, but it's gonna be perfect for the Salem witch trials so I was gonna get fancy and do silk but I decided I would go ahead and just use DMC's for it this time um, so I also though picked up 
uh, a magazine, the Punch Needle and um, Primitive Stitcher. I don't know how to punch needle, but I, there's some patterns in here that make me want to learn. Plus, there's a great Barbara Anna piece in there. That's what really kind of sold me on it. There's some cute pieces in here. There's a cute little sampler there. And um, the punch needle stuff is, of course, it's all fall and Halloween stuff, which I'm a sucker for anyway. So um, I'm, I'm a fan of that. And oh, look, there's a Lindy Stitches one in there that's really super cute too. So I'm glad I went ahead and picked this up. It was on, she's having a 30% off sale right now. So it was only $7. And there's tons of cool patterns in here, so I think that's pretty good value for money. Huh? Okay, so let's get to Stitchy Box here. Come on, buddy. You want to come up here? Come on. All right, so we're on day number five. Day five. So let's see here what we got. Can't tell. The other floss. Feels like it. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, so this is Stitchy Silk. Pine Stitchy Silk. Are you brave or foolish enough to head into the deep dark forest on Halloween? Either way, this fabulous Stitchy Silk can add a forest to your stitching. So, ooh, that's beautiful. Kind of matches the green in my shirt, too. Isn't that, isn't that lovely? So, I'm excited to try these because I've never. Um, stitch with silk before so um i'm excited to try these out okay um what buddy say hi to everybody no okay hi say hello yeah um well i'm probably going to end the video for here for today i've got a meeting here in a little while and then i've got a class tonight and I'm in between i'm gonna do some grading i hope um so I'm going to go ahead and end the video for right now, and uh, we'll catch up with y'all tomorrow, I guess. Huh, Willie? We're going to catch up with you tomorrow? What? No, no, no. I love you. Bye, y'all. See you tomorrow.